We've made our way to Dimensional Analysis Part 3, where I'm going to work through a whole bunch of examples with you. So um, I want to get us started right away here. You should know the rules. There were two videos ahead of this. If you didn't watch them, go ahead and follow the links. They'll be somewhere on here. That'll take you back to the videos to help you understand what Dimensional Analysis really is. But for this one, I just want to go right into the examples and work through some of these. So the first one I've got up here, how many seconds in one year. And if I follow the rules that I set out earlier, the first thing I need to do is figure out, well, what do I know in this example? And right here, it's anything that has a number with it. In this case, we're starting off with one year. I'm going to abbreviate it that way just to make it easy on myself. Now, you should recall that anything over one is itself. And I'm going to try to get rid of that unit of years and turn it into up here, seconds. The only way to get rid of it is to put years down here at the bottom and I can turn years into something closer to seconds and I'll say what let's go ahead and do days days there are 365 point roughly two five days in one year but I'm just gonna keep it this way nice and easy and when I do that look at here years are gonna cancel out and now I'm left in days okay but I don't wanna be in days so I need another conversion factor with days down here at the bottom and then I can turn days into hours, which gets me closer because I know there are 24 hours in one day. So I'm getting closer to seconds here. Days are going to cancel out. And if I was to get my answer right now, I would be in hours. I don't want to be in hours. I'm going to put hours down here and I can go directly into minutes because I know that conversion because there are 60 minutes in one hour. And look, we're canceling our units as we go along. Now my answer is in minutes at this point, but remember, I want to be in seconds, so I've got one more to do. I need to put minutes down here and seconds up here. Go ahead and cancel these off just to show that, hey, I'm only left with seconds. That part's really important to me. And then I fill this in 60 seconds in one minute. I take out my trusty calculator and just take 1 times 365, get an answer, times 24, times 60, times 60, and I end up with 31 million. 536,000, what's my units? Seconds in a year. So you only got 31 million or so of them every year. Again, this is not exact because I've rounded off that 365, but to learn the process, that's a pretty good example. I've got a bunch more coming up. Let's go to the next one. Next exa example, we're going to look at the speed of light. And we're going to convert that from meters per second into miles per hour. Now, this isn't exact. It's actually 2.998 and all. You know, it's, it's a little more complex than 3.00. But I wanted to make it as easy as possible. Now, first thing, write down what I know. That's obviously the, the number I have up there, which is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th. This is meters per second. Okay, so that's my known what I'm trying to get my answer in when I get all the way to the end is up here, miles per hour. So I'm going to keep on working till I end up at miles per hour. Now I can decide, do I want to tack that uh, meters or seconds first? Because again, my answer up here needs to be in miles per hour. So I'm going to go after the meters first, which means I'm going to put meters down here. And one thing that will get me closer to miles, i got to get into the metric system or from the metric system into the English system. The easiest way for me to remember that is to get to centimeters and then go to inches. So if you always remember this one, it will always take you to the right spot because we know that there are 100 centimeters in one meter. Those are going to cancel. Now I'm in centimeters. I can take those centimeters put it down here because I need to get rid of centimeters and I can turn those into inches because I always remember that 2.54 centimeters is one inch. Now my centimeters cancel and my answer is in inches. That's not the right place yet. I'm getting closer. I can take inches and I can turn those into feet because I remember a ruler has 12 inches in one foot. Those inches are going to cancel and now I've got to get rid of feet because I've got feet there so I'm gonna put feet up here and I can turn feet into miles because I've got conversion factor right down here it says 5,280 feet in one mile 
my feet are going to cancel. So right now my answer is in miles. All right, I've run myself out of room. So I'm just going to draw a line to help us keep track. We're actually going to continue all of our work down here. So hopefully that gives us enough space. You'll have to bear with me. If you've got a nice big sheet of paper, it makes it a little bit easier. Now, right now I'm in miles at the top, and that's what I want my answer in up here. So I'm not going to leave the top alone. I'm going to work on this seconds down here, which means even all the way here, again, that continues. I can put seconds on the top, and it will cancel out that seconds way on down the line over here. And I can turn seconds into minutes because there are 60 seconds in one minute. And I know that's going to cancel all the way over there with that. My answer is right now in miles per minute because of those are the only labels I have left. So let me put minutes here and put hours down here. There's 60 minutes in one hour. This is going to cancel. Look at the only two I have left are the one I want my answers in. I've got miles on the top and I've got hours down here on the bottom. So now I take out my trusty calculator, I type in 3.00, then I hit the EE button right here, find the EE button on your calculator, 3.00, EE8, that means 3.00 times 10 to the 8, then I start working my way through, times 100, divided by 2.54, divided by 12, divided by 5,280, times 60, times 60, until I finally end up with something pretty close to 671 million. We've got a whole bunch of other numbers in there. Um, miles per hour. Okay, now that's going to get rounded off to the correct number of sig significant figures. But for right now, the main goal is to figure out how to do this dimensional analysis and how to keep track of everything. So I'm going to move on to the next one. We're just going to keep working our way down the line. Let's look at one more. In March, your heating bill was $123.45. What is the hourly cost of heating your home? Now, here's the, here's the trouble people run into all the time with word problems. They're like, I just don't know where to start. Well, right here, word problems. All you have to do with dimensional analysis is figure out what you know, and it's going to be a number. So in this case, and this one takes a little more than I'm showing you, but for now... We've got $123.45, and technically it's $123.45 per month, and it was in this one month of March, okay? So we're dealing with per month, and we want to ultimately turn that into cost per hour, so dollars per hour, which means these dollars over here, I'm not going to mess with them at all. I'm only going to go after this down here, the month. So I'm going to put month up here because I want to go from months and get down to hours. Okay, I can turn months into days. Well, how am I going to know how many days in a month? Well, if you haven't learned this trick yet, it's about time you did. Okay, um, I'm going to do it for you like you're looking at me, but let's go January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Every time I landed on a knuckle, that month has 31 days. Every time I landed in a valley of my hand here, that month does not have 31 days. It has 30 days, unless it's February, and then it has 28, unless it's a leap year, and then it has 29. But you catch the drift. So let's go back here. We've got January, February, March. March landed on a knuckle, which means March has 31 days. Ooh, that's important. These months are going to cancel because they're on opposite sides of the lines. I have days on the bottom. I don't want to have days on the bottom. I'm trying to get hours, dollars per hour, dollars per hour. So I can turn days into hours because there are 24 hours in one day. And look at days are going to cancel. Now the only two things that I have left up here are dollars and hours. And that, remember, is what I want my answer in up here. So I take out my trusty calculator, 123.45 times 1 divided by 31, take that answer, times 1 for days, and down here divided by 24, and <laughs> ultimately you should end up with an answer of 0.16578 per hour. I'm just going to round that up to roughly 17 cents per hour. 
So every second that goes by, if you're spending that much to heat your house, this is what it's costing you or costing whomever's paying your bill. Next one. So let's look at the important stuff. Dimensional analysis in real life. Believe it or not, this is the concept you're going to use all the time. You might not call it dimensional analysis, but anytime you're converting between one thing and the next, you're trying to figure out the price of gas per gallon or how much you're spending on a trip to drive somewhere. Or if you're a nice person, you're going to throw your friend a pizza party. What's it going to cost you and how many hours are you going to have to work to pay for it? So you're going to throw a pizza party for your friend's birthday and there should be an apostrophe S there. I apologize. There's 13 guests will attend. Each pizza is going to cost you $9 and has eight slices of greasy, cheesy awesomeness. You figure each guest will eat about three slices of your awesome pizza. How many pizzas are you going to need in order to order? And how much is it going to cost you? And because you make $9.50 an hour at your day, do day job, how many hours are you going to have to work to pay for this pizza party? I need more room, so I've got more room on the next slide here to help me out. We're going to follow the same exact rules that we did before. First thing we always do, number one, is figure out what do we know. We've got a lot of stuff up here, right? And just about every one of these things up here is some conversion factor. We've got 13 guests at the party. Each pizza, $9 per pizza, and each pizza has eight slices. Each guest will eat three slices, and you make nine fifty an hour. Well, <laughs> where do I start? There's lots of places you can start. In fact, you could start at some of the other places and still end up at the correct answer. But let's start, think about where we're trying to go. We're trying to go from the guests to how many hours I'm going to have to work to pay for this party. So really, we're starting at the party. And we know that there are going to be, <coughs> excuse me, 13 guests at the party. So 13 guests per party. Now, my ultimate answer, I'm going to put it in blue up here. My ultimate answer when I get done should say, how many hours will I have to work to pay for the party? So my answer should be in hours, okay? And it might be hours per party because this is the party that I'm paying for. And that's because I already put party down here, so I know I'm going to need that. If you left it off, it's still going to work and it's totally going to be okay. Let's work our way through here. That means we need to go after guests because party's going to stay on the bottom. So I'm going to put guests up here. Do I have anything else? That includes guests. Well, look here. Guests will each eat three slices. So that's a conversion factor. I'm going to put slices here. One guest will eat three slices. Now my guests cancel out. That's good. Now my answer is in slices per party because those are the only variables I have left. And remember, I want it in hours per party or hours for this one party. So I need to have slices down here. Do I have any other conversion factors up here? Oh, each pizza has eight slices. So I'm going to put pizza here. One pizza has eight slices. Now I should be using a different color here. To, we can see these. These canceled out. These canceled out. And now I'm working with pizzas per party. All right? But I don't want pizzas at the top. I want hours at the top. So how do I do that? I look for another conversion factor. Well, look here. Here's pizzas right here. So if I put pizza there, I know that one pizza is nine, that should be a nine, is nine dollars. Now my pizzas are going to cancel out, cancel the pizzas, and I have dollars per party. But I still want hours, so I've got one more step to go here. Let me see if I can fit this in. And I need to put dollars down here at the bottom. I have one more conversion left, 9.50 per hour at my day job. Let me do some canceling, some cleaning up. Um, the dollar symbol is going to cancel. So right now, the only two things that I'm left with are this, hours and party. And that is what I want my answer in. So I just go through and do a little bit of math to figure out I'm going to have about 
4.75 hours per party or 4.75 hours again there's some rounding differences maybe in your answer to be able to pay for this friends, friends party you must be a pretty good friend and look this is totally complex looked scary but in the end it wasn't scary and you did perfectly fine and this is where we're headed you're gonna be able to do these no problem I haven't even given you a uh, chemistry problem yet but all you have to do is figure out what you're gonna start with what you know and keep canceling units till you get your answer at the end cancel the units stop thinking so hard stop working so hard just figure out what you know and find out what do I need to put on the bottom to get rid of that unit, turn it into something else, into the next one, cross it out, turn it into something else. Continue that till you get whatever your answer is and you'll be right every single time. Now you can take this all the way to chemistry. Here's where we're headed. And if you're watching the videos in sequence, you're going to get there when you get to mole ratios and you get to stoichiometry. So it's a little further down the line. Um, and in my class, in my room, that's a still a couple months to get to that point. But here's what you're going to be able to do when you can do dimensional analysis. How many atoms of hydrogen are in a sample of hydrogen peroxide with a mass of 12.32 grams? And right now, if that makes you go, I have no idea how to do that, that's no problem. Because you know dimensional analysis, you need to learn just a few more things, and you'll be able to answer that question correctly 100% of the time. So good luck. Keep on learning.